Hawk handling is something that is butchered at every level and it's easy to see why. It is hard to do. We have big goalie gloves and a goalie stick that make it difficult to shoot a puck or stick handle the way a player would. So I really think it's important that we're as efficient as possible out there and the two principles and the bonus tip that I have in this video will really help you to improve your puck handling. There are lots of good puck handling instructional videos out there. I recommend you watch them. This is just going to be more of a principle based video. These are two things, three things really that you can apply to your game immediately and I think will have a big benefit. Puck handling has always been one of the strengths of my game and I give credit to these principles that I'm about to talk about. It really helped me get more confident and have a much better success rate when I leave the net to handle the puck. Rule number one, no surprise here, is consistent practice. Anything you want to get good at, you have to do often and puck handling is no different. So there are a few different ways you can get that extra practice in. The first thing you can do is probably more likely in the off season, but get a shooting board, get something that you can shoot a puck of off of outside, use your gloves, use your goalie stick and find a wall and shoot pucks maybe every day, maybe every other day, but have a goal in mind. So it could be like shooting 50 forehand pucks every day and then 50 backhand as well. Make that a goal and really spend the time working on your shot. It will make a big difference in your puck handling when you get back on the ice. The second way to practice puck handling at home is to use a golf ball. Make sure you're using your goalie stick and your goalie gloves. And if you're on a carpeted floor, use a stick without tape. But just practice stick handling with that golf ball. That will have a big carryover to the way you handle the puck on the ice. Even though the golf ball is different from the puck, I think you'll notice a big benefit. There's a lot of carryover to stick handling with a golf ball and stick handling with a puck. I know I did this for about a year when I was 17. I just put on a TV show and stick handled the golf ball in my house with my gloves on and it made a big difference over the year. My puck handling was a lot more smooth and consistent. I found it a lot easier to do after spending that time using the golf ball to improve my stick handling. That's another way to practice your puck handling. I definitely recommend that you do that. And the third way is to do what you'll see Carey Price doing. If you watch YouTube videos of him at practice, there's so many times where he is just stick handling and shooting and acting more like a defenseman than a goalie. Whenever he's not doing a drill or not facing any shots, he's picking up a puck, stick handling, and getting in that practice that you do for maybe five, 10 minutes at one skate, and it doesn't seem like much, but over a season and over many years, it really adds up. Just, uh, you know, it's just time practicing, really. Um, every day I practice stick handling the puck, um, whether I'm just skating around in circles, just handling the puck, just getting a feel for it. Well, the biggest thing I think is just uh, get your eyes up ice. In practices, we know there's a lot of free time, the puck's at the other end, there's nothing for us to do, and I really encourage you to take that time to work on your puck handling abilities. And then principle number two is to always have a backup plan when you leave the net. When you leave the net, you want to scan your environment, you want to know what's going on around you, and then you probably will have an ideal situation. So that could be making a short pass to your defenseman, it could be clearing the puck out of the zone, whatever it is, that's your first plan, but you need a backup plan as well. So this plan is when, if things go really bad, this is a last resort to avoid giving the puck up in front of the net, or doing something that will lead to a quick goal. Depends on the situation, but it could be just dumping the puck in the corner somewhere out of reach of anybody so that you have time to get back to the net. It could be just rifling the puck high and hard off the glass. That could be another option for your backup plan. But every time you leave the net, you should look around you and have an idea of what you want to do and then what you may have to do if things go wrong. Knowing that you're most likely going to not screw something up and cause a goal right away, that really helps you feel confident leaving the net, which of course will make you a better puck handler as well. So knowing that no matter what happens, even if things go crazy in front of you, you have a plan that will give you time to get back to the net and won't lead to a quick goal. My final tip is to make sure that you communicate with your teammates. So before the season even starts, you should be talking to them, finding out what they like you to do in most situations when you leave the net. Would they prefer that you stop the puck and leave it for them? Would they rather spread out and become a passing option for you? You need to talk these things out. You need to find out what works for them. And then you develop a system that you can fall back on the majority of the time. And then of course, when things go differently, when things don't go according to plan, you need to communicate even more on the ice in those situations. So make sure that you're vocal, make sure that your teammates are telling you what they want you to do. If you leave the net, they should be talking to you. They should say either shoot it or leave it, or they should be getting open and making that clear to you as well. Make sure that you're both communicating and talking things out on the ice. 
because if you're quiet, they won't know what's happening. If they're not talking to you, you won't know what they want you to do. Make sure you're talking all the time, you're vocal, and you have good communication between you and your teammates. I really don't think puck handling is that hard. It comes down to practice, preparation, and confidence. And the first two things there, practice and preparation, will lead to that confidence. Puck handling, to me, mostly comes down to that confidence because a lot of goalies leave the net and they're scared, they're worried about making a mistake, which is going to make them more likely to make a mistake in the first place. When you're relaxed, you leave the net, you don't stress about your options, you have a backup plan, you know if you have to, you can shoot the puck hard, you can leave the puck in the corner. So having those ideas in your head, having that Confidence makes you a much better puck handler. So make sure you're doing these things if you want to make puck handling a strength in your game. I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and make sure you check out our goalie training programs at the link in the description below.